So we're gonna start start with uh, Isle by Sam Barlow, which is from 1999. I did like that all of these were within a year. Is that so? Like, was that just like a thing that was going on? They were like, "Well, what happens if?" And then a bunch of people like decided to make you know really really limited games. Yeah, I think that Isle was the first one of these incredibly limited parser one move games, uh, and then yeah, it kind of touched uh, touched off a of movement. You could make an argument that Photopia, Photopia is the first like IF as art title. This is a pretty strong contender for like the first sort of meta IF or like experimental IF, postmodern IF. Okay. Mm, as I'm saying that, that's not true. It is certainly one of the first, and it definitely touched off a movement. Um, definitely important piece of uh, IF history. Yeah, I mean, definitely, it, it was interesting when I when I played through, and I, we talked about how much I like genuinely enjoyed this game. Um, playing through like uh, Amnesia and having it be definitely self-aware of what it was doing it, mm. it, um it is currently uh on youtube right now getting cut down from a four-hour stream to being like no this is the only 45 minutes i actually wanted to save for posterity because the uh hour and a half of me going around one room in breakers was interesting for me but <laughs> I, don't, I don't think needed to be saved in quite the same way i mean it's definitely an authentic representation of the if experience x door inventory use item on door no fuck you okay use next item on door <laughs> no fuck you okay south well, like, door, what, inventory. what was cool about it was that there you had no inventory you start with a red ball and you just it's all uh dialogue based huh so like it was it was a cool system and a cool world and they were building it and like i, I dug the world and i just couldn't get out of the first room in an hour and a half and I was like, I'm gonna play something else. <laughs> Understandable. So the exact opposite of that um, is Isle. Which I, I do... Is this, like, part of it? That you just get this, like, splash screen? That you were about to read a story, or rather, part of a story... You will be asked to define the story by controlling one instant in the man whose story it is. Your intervention will begin and end the story. But be warned, there are many stories, and not all of them are about the same man. Yeah, there's a um, an aspect of this that I think a lot about um, Tim O'Brien's book, the, um, In the Lake of the Woods. Have you ever read that? No. It's, uh, I actually, I reread it pretty recently. It's this um, very uh, abstract kind of psychological exploration of this PTSD riddled Vietnam vet's mind. Uh, and he may or may not have murdered his wife. Uh, he certainly flashes back to it with great detail. And the end of the book is left, uh, it's left ambiguous whether he actually murdered his wife or not. And um, I think that the ultimate point of the narrative is that it's possible because of, you know, the meta, like, because of the way that fiction works, you can read it in all of those ways. He didn't murder his wife. He did. He went on to live happily ever after. He committed suicide. He paid repentance for his crimes, or he didn't. All of those things kind of exist in the same sphere, right? Uh, and that's the kind of concept that this thing is playing off of. Um, I think it's probably not a coincidence that Sam Barlow went on to write her story, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and if you have never played it, you really, really should. Uh, that is another 
work of interactive narrative that plays a lot with the ambiguity of truth and the possibility that there are many truths and they can things can be true at the same time. Cool. I, I wish I had a smarter thing to say than that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's like, like I don't know, that's that's the kind of things that I think IF has this like potential for it that you know other game styles especially like purely narrative like like playing um like a point and click adventure doesn't necessarily have that or like something like that where if can can be much weirder um in how how it handles like states and that kind of thing because you're not as limited to like actually having to show it on a screen um yeah there, there's there is an adventure game has a beginning and a middle and an end and you progress through it you solve some puzzles and at the end of it you've you come to the conclusion that the game wants you to come to uh i guess what we're really talking about here is branching narratives right but like i think that i does something a little more interesting even and kind of fuzzier where it's not just endings but it's the actual story itself um, i haven't played this in ages and honestly i barely remember it so i'm kind of excited to dig into some of the levels in your from what i from what i recall there are a lot of them all right so let, let's let's start then um all right all right let me hit enter and i'm on the wrong screen there we go and cool it crops well. That that's all that I cared about. <laughs> hey. All right. So late Thursday night, you've had a hard day, and the last thing you need is this: shopping. Luckily, the place is pretty empty, and you're progressing rapidly. On to the next aisle. Interesting. Fresh gnocchi. You haven't had any of that since Rome. The aisle stretches to the north and back to the south. The shelves on either side of you block your view of the rest of the supermarket, with only the brightly colored aisle markers visible. You've stopped your trolley next to the pasta section, bright plastic bags full of pale skin tone shapes. There is a brunette woman a few meters ahead, filling her trolley with sauces. Okay, so you told me last time that there are two things that I need to try first before anything else. Mm-hmm. All right, let's look at myself. You don't need a mirror to know what you look like. Old. Old beyond your years, as they say. Old. Old and lonely. You look lonely. You are lonely. You are well-dressed, but people think you're a tramp. You feel like a tramp. Ever since Claire left you, without a word, in Rome... You leave your trolley and walk to the exit, then drive home. And then I think all of them end with the end of the story, the end of a story, but not the only story. And it mm -hmm. takes you back to the start. All right, and then X, Y, Z, Z, Y. Maybe years ago, when things were more about fun and were less real, you've come too far to go back. Oh, but it grants us an extra turn, though. That's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All try right. a say, try say, Zizzy. Hmm. All right. Oh, worth a shot. I mean, <sighs> that's definitely. <laughs> I do like that this is the second one uh, made after that's like strongly a meme. I actually tried that in all the other games, the ones from the 80s, and like they were just like, what the heck? What are you yeah. trying to do here? <laughs> but, like, I, I love that this is like, what is that? That's from like uh, Colossal Cave, right? Or I guess Adventure. Yep. So, like, this that is, is like now 20 years and it's like oh, okay now the like nostalgia cycle is hit and like do something at least witty on it 
as opposed to just like yeah that was like a totally different game why do you think that would even like begin to work <laughs> apparently frots uh is also a um a spell from colossal cave adventure got it yeah you see you see a lot of uh, references to that spell list that pop up especially in the kind of classic ish if yeah it was it was interesting watching the like uh the get lamp documentary mm -hmm. it was very how much was tied to to colossal cave which i didn't really like i got but didn't really get it's not actually a very good game it's not it's not that fun to play is the thing yeah i mean it's i feel like it's like a lot of like looking at um atari games you know, or or older, even older, you know, like a fair child, child, or something like that. And you're like, what is the game here? What what are we really trying to play? This is dots. This doesn't even seem fun. Um, mm. And like that that happens all throughout games. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think, like, it's important to know where stuff is coming from. That's why I'm, like, trying to get through some interesting games from before the modern time. And really happy to have you to be to show off sort of the stuff within, I guess, this is almost 25 years old. Oh. Uh, don't think about it. <laughs> um, all right. So, so I looked at myself and I was old and sad and I miss Claire. Something um, happened. Claire, Claire left us in room, it sounds like. Can I take the Naki? You pick up the pack of Naki. And toss it into your trolley. You'll have that tonight with some olive oil and a few leaves of fresh basil, just like in Rome. Though without Claire, but it's useless remembering. Best enjoy the Naki. Hmm. The end of another story, but then there are others. Let's try to eat the Naki. Eat Naki. You rip open the packet and take out a few Naki, cramming them into your mouth. The uncooked flowery balls clog in your throat, <laughs> and you swallow them down hard. The brunette glances at you and moves on quickly. You feel stupid, so slip the open bag back onto the shelf and carry on. It's never been as good as it was in Rome. <laughs> exactly sure what i was expecting <laughs> I, that... <laughs> another story over but then uh all right fine i'll take the bait remember room i did not and this is why i want want you to, to help co-pilot on these because i would not have even thought remember would be a verb room you pick up the Naki and stare at the illustration of Piazza Vene Venezia on its package. You remember sun, heat, food, pasta, sauces, wine, love, ancient, modern, Italian, American, love, and ultimately pain. A pain you thought you'd forgotten, but like a cancer returning to wreak havoc again. The pain resurfaces and tears through the thin barriers you had erected. Tears flow. Memories, guilt. And finally, acceptance. You live with it. Hmm. Say hi to woman. Oh, no. Maybe just greet woman? Greet woman. Huh. Threaten woman? Mm -hmm. 
kiss woman. Sure, that does something. Uh. <laughs> you walk briskly up to the brunette. As you lean over her, she turns and gives a puzzled look. You force her mouth onto hers and reach out hotly for her. She pushes you off. You slip to the floor and she runs to the checkout. A bulky security man pulls you to your feet and escorts you from the store. Falling to the pavement outside, you stop yourself with outstretched hand, landing near a dirty puddle left by the recent rain. Your old face stares up at you. How long was it since you kissed those lips? How long since you kissed? Too long? Too late. Kiss Nyaki. I'm so glad that it's in bold up there because you certainly don't want to kiss that. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's also worth noting, and kind of one of the interesting design aspects of this game is that um, the implementation of verbs in it is, was pretty revolutionary at the time. I think it's like something like 200 um, endings that you can come through. I don't think oh, we're wow. gonna even find half of those today. Like, yeah, we we would have to. Speed run 100%. <laughs> oh my god. 100 percenting aisle. Take sauce. You run over to the sauces. You'll need some sauce. Something a little spicy? There's a little jar of arabiata that'll do nicely. The woman moves to the side as you reach past her and grab a couple jars. Thanks, you mutter. She smiles. You walk back to your trolley, stranded in the middle of the aisle. Grab a bag of spaghetti and move on to the next aisle. Uh, drink sauce. <laughs> I can't see why you would want to drink that. Oh, but what eating the... a raw Naki. <laughs> okay. Um, do, do, do. Ex woman? Sure. You stare at the woman. She is about your height, maybe even a little taller. And beautiful, too, with superb hair. Strange. You haven't thought that about a woman for a while. Not since Rome. You continue to stare at her. You wonder if she's called Claire. Then she moves on to the next aisle. You grab a bag of pasta, penne, and carry on with your shopping. Hmm. Alright, let's go north. <laughs> nope, Naki is not on the list. Push the trolley forwards, moving around the brunette, and continue your shop. Alright, south? Hmm. South, yeah. Nope, Naki is not on the list. You turn the trolley around and head back to the previous aisle. You're sure you forgot something. Whatever it was you can't remember, you scoot back to the pasta aisle. The brunette has gone and the aisle is empty. Grab some cheap pasta and carry on shopping. Hmm. Murder woman. You run over to her and throw a punch, which knocks her into the shelves. Jars fall and splatter grainy red sauces across the aisle. Shit. You run out, out to the car and drive. Drive home. When you pick park up, you find that you are holding the Naki from the supermarket. What was it about the Naki? You can't remember. I don't think you want to remember. You feel ashamed, stupid, and old. What if we think about the Naki? Or try to remember the Naki? You focus on the Naki, and whilst the little flowery balls remain the same, everything else changes. There is a flush of noise in your ears, the cold air pushed away by the warmth from tabletop candles. A friendly waiter approaches. Naki for two? His English is correct, but with a European slant. You nod. Prego. You volunteer as he lays the plate before you. Claire pregos too as he presents her plate. He asks you if you would like a bottle of wine. Uno vino rosé, you reply in half Italian. He scurries away, whilst the smaller waiter hurries to you and puts a basket of bread and breadsticks on the table. Prego! He nods as he backs away into the busy restaurant. You take a fork and spear a butt of Naki, dunking it into the sauce. 
As you draw it up to your mouth, your eyes level with Claire's. You shake your head and are back in the supermarket. Hmm. Maybe there was something more important than Nazis? But it's gone now. You take a couple packets and pile them into the trolley. Then with a push of the wrist, you move the trolley onwards. Okay. Hmm. Um, um. I kind of want to see what the aisle markers say. Yeah. Each aisle has its marker hanging it above it on a long trail. Long rail. Look at the sections. Dairy, meat, bread, fish, sweets, alcohol, toiletries, frozen. Hard to decide which aisle you belong in. Before you met Claire, you were meat. Raw, unfocused, a bit simple. With her... You were promoted to a more civilized taste. Sweets, alcohol. You were intoxicated. She was sweet. Meat was always wrapped in a puff pastry or swamped in a pasta sauce. Never crude, raw, bloody. Now, well, you're back to meat again. Except this time, you're frozen. If someone hit you hard enough, you'd smash into hundreds of icy pieces. Oh no, do we murder Claire? Do you, do you want to remember Claire? Yeah, I think we got to remember Claire. Claire. You stare at the Naki and it opens up to you. Years ago, a holiday to Rome. A romantic holiday. Two lovers, young. Yourself and Claire. Culture, food, sun. Then something happened and Claire was gone. You had thought it best not to remember, but perhaps remembering is good. You forget the shopping and go home to think. Hmm. Can we remember something? Like, what's the something that happened? You can't remember Wait. her. May you remember, remember what happened? Nope. Hmm. So that was remembering Claire. Do we try thinking about Claire? Is there? Is there? Do you think there's a difference between uh, that how that interprets? Or... Uh, nope. Nah. All right. Good think. <sighs> hmm. Uh, remember Piazza? Well, shit. Mm. Remember what you're supposed to goddamn buy. Nope. Uh... Hmm. Do we have an inventory? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> Taking everything oh, from your pockets, you crouch down and line up your possessions on the floor. Wallet. Coins, bank card, store card, book club card, photo. Each object representing something else is like a word. The inventory sentence ends and begins with that photo. An attempt to possess Claire in her image, to hold her and to contain her. You rearrange the coins in a circle around the photo, a makeshift frame. A photo of Claire. If only you could lose these first few words. Claire. Then you could hold Claire, possess Claire, she would be yours. With a furtive glance, you scoop up your things and return them to your pockets. The photo burns a hole in your pocket, through your heart, into the center of the universe. Yeah, <laughs> very smart to, to put that uh, list of things in the, in the chat so that we have it there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess we got an X photo. Yeah. You can't use your possessions directly. That is bullshit, and you know it, Sam Barlow. Piece of shit. Um... Show photo to woman. Not Ooh, good. Um, what? Woman about Claire. Excuse me. The brunette turns, gives you a nod. You explain briefly the story of you and Claire. 
Amazingly, she listens. When you finish, you ask, where did I go wrong? She looks apologetic. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. But it doesn't sound like anyone was to blame. Sometimes people just grow apart. Thanks. You walk away. That's a real answer you were looking for. Or that's the answer you were looking for. If only you had told her the real story. Hmm. Remember story? Darn. Nah, that would make it too easy. Well, we can ask the woman about things. Ask woman about gnocchi? You pick up the gnocchi. Excuse me. I don't know if you could help. I had this in a restaurant once. In Rome. Do you know how to cook it? She pauses. Well, she takes a pack and points the instructions on the back. Look, you just boil it for a few minutes. She pauses and your eyes catch on each other. A beautiful flower bursts somewhere between you. I could cook it for you. You both move on to a new aisle and then home. Oh, so there is a good ending. Okay, I was getting... I, okay. That said, who... Like, people meet in all kinds of places, but I'm not sure if I would just volunteer to cook a rando in the grocery aisle my, some gnocchi. Like... <laughs> that's just me. I mean... I... <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Um, okay, so we have, what else do we have here? Uh, why don't we ask the woman her name? Tall, slim, dark haired. You walk up to her and introduce yourself. Then you consider, continue. Now, I'm at a disadvantage. You know my name, but I don't know yours. She smiles. I'm Claire. She doesn't say whether it's with an eye or not. We'll just assume. In a whipcraft chain of rather bizarre events, you end up in the supermarket cafe surrounded by a pile of shopping bags. You sit across the tiny table from each other, sipping on your coffee and chatting. Even more bizarre is the fact that you get on. Fabulously. She leaves her bags in her car, storing the frozen stuff in your freezer. In the morning, you lend her a shirt. All these hmm. domestic touches can only bode well for the future. Hmm. Hmm. It was italicized. Um. Scream. An awful image, a fragmented collage of a beautiful restaurant. Outdoors, the pantheon and a dreadful blood-soaked smile. No, not a smile, a plea. You spell the memory in one painful scream. Shoppers walk by uneasily, eyes locked away from you as you walk out into the night. You hope the night will be more kind. Uh, so I think the implication, and like I was just talking about how this game holds a lot of different truths in the narrative. Mm -hmm. mm, it seems pretty, like, the, I think the implication is extremely heavy that something very bad happened to Claire in Rome. The question is, is it our fault? Yeah. Is, so, like, is there a way to examine that? Hmm. Memory? Just memory. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a verb. What is just remember without any... Oh, Ooh. Yeah, lame. I'm still wondering if there's any meaningful difference between uh, how it parses remember and think of... 
No, but it was clear before. Yeah, Sam. Mm. We could try to pee ourselves. Lame. Piss? Oh no! <laughs> Don't. No. Um. Cry. Okay. Years of loneliness condense into the innocent, flowery white buds of Naki. Your e knees weaken and you drop to the floor. Salty tears running in streams down your face and dripping off your chin. When the tears abate, you get to your feet. You come to realize that there will always be tears. Hmm. I just... I just refuse to believe that. <laughs> I can I can see how one would do that from a game design perspective, because you know, introducing um actual objects, not even just like in terms of narrative, but objects in terms of like things that the game has to handle. Probably make it pretty fucking complicated pretty fast. Yeah, it's like I mean, yeah, that's that's like five nouns that you now have to figure out what they do and integrate with all of your 200 odd <laughs> verbs um all right so like i think i think we're going a good direction with like just human actions rather than like combine base with this or examine this so i'm gonna try dancing hey dance you put a spring into your step and hop to the slow swing of the music you're in a surprisingly jovial mood but you do stop yourself before you make a scene thinking back it was probably her claire who made you care less about what people think i mean what is wrong with a little dance if you feel like it that's one of the things you'll remember her for. So, all right, what are some other human things like crying and shouting that you can do in a grocery? <laughs> uh, you can do anything in a grocery if you believe in yourself. Um. Okay, let's see. We tried cry, scream. Um, we tried peeing. You didn't implement that, you coward. Uh, I'm glad that this is, like, top on the things that you do in a grocery. Cry, scream. <laughs> look, look let, let he who has never been moved to tears at the stop and shop uh, cast the first stone. <laughs> um... <laughs> Throw right, yourself just... on the floor. Uh, collapse. Um, take off your clothes. Do a cartwheel. I'm just going to put the on here. What she doesn't realize, and a lot of people don't realize, oh, no. this, <laughs> is that you look bloody good for your age. Anyone could look good in a shirt and trousers. But you actually look good, especially for your age. You pull your jumper over your head and throw it on the floor. A few tugs and your shirt crumples around your feet. You kick off your shoes and bend down to remove your socks. You look up to see the brunette, shocked and intrigued. With a death flick, <laughs> your belt snakes out of the hooks on your trousers. Your trousers <laughs> fall and you stand, pink and hairy, in the middle of the aisle. The brunette puts a hand to her mouth. Whoa! You take a hand to your balls, cuffing them and displaying your penis. Pretty good, eh? For my Great. age. You perform, perform a little twirl. You wouldn't give up on this, would you? The squeak of shoes behind you makes you turn to see several security guards coming at you from the direction of the checkout. You stand your ground. 
As the men circle, they grab you reluctantly, careful where to put their hands. One of them scoops your clothes up and forces you into your trousers. Stupid old perv. Offers the fattest of the guards, avoiding your eyes. They drag you to the front of the shop. The police are on their way. You are informed. As you take, as they take you past the queues and the checkout, you turn to confront your audience. You want some? You all do. <laughs> Catching a glimpse of your reflection in the automatic door as you smile. You'll never lose your smile. Well, yes, hmm. among the normal grocery aisle things to do, taking off your clothes seemed fruitful. Uh, what was your next suggestion? Uh, that, I, that one threw me for a loop. Goddamn. Um... <laughs> yeah, I did not expect to have to read the phrase cup your balls. <laughs> um, oh, I have so many ideas. Uh, this is delightful. I forgot, or I not played this in so long. I don't actually remember. Uh, how about... Uh, what? Let's try asking the lady about room or clear. So we asked her about Claire. That was when. Oh, did she, we? Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. Said um, that, that it could have. That it just probably just happened. Yeah. Let's ask her about room. room. You draw your trolley alongside the brunette. Clearing your throat, you introduce yourself. She asks you what you want. Sorry, yeah, I just wanted to know. Have you ever been to Rome? She thinks, no, I've never been to Italy. My husband suggested Rome, actually, for a holiday this year. What's this for? Is it some consumer survey? You chuckle, well, I'm a consumer and I'm asking a question. So, maybe. She smiles. Is that it? You nod. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. You walk back towards your trolley. Oh, one more thing. Don't go to Rome with your husband. Try Paris instead. Wish I had. Um. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like where you're going with this, like, human condition thing. Okay, so we, like, we could, um, we could sing, we could go to sleep, we could, sing. yeah, jump up and down. Sing a song. Okay. Sing a sad song. You start off singing softly to yourself, what must appear to be but a mumble to other shoppers. But then you slowly get louder and louder until everyone in the shop is glancing nervously at you. Seems the more you sing, the more uncomfortable everyone gets. You stop, chuckle, then continue with your shopping. The aisles seem more empty somehow. Oh, that's sad. I have a feeling that, like, everybody enjoys me just, like, constantly talking to myself while I go shopping. I don't know hmm. about you, I listen to podcasts when I shop, and then I find myself realizing that, like, I am talking to myself at a volume way louder than I thought I was because I have the podcast going. Yeah. Um, yeah, jump up and down. Staring at the Naki, you feel a mo memory slowly, awkwardly, awfully rise to the surface. The scooter driver looks surprised. Surprise. You grab for Claire and jump to the side. Bounce across the road. Scrape your head. Scuffed and lightheaded, you open your eyes. Your hands are empty. Claire is a few meters away, lying awkwardly, splattered with a thin red liquid reflecting the scooter's pink, bright red paintwork. The scooter skids. You jump. You're in the supermarket. Your hands are empty and sweaty. So yeah, that's She's... like going to exactly what you were saying. Like, something bad happened. Some of them sound pretty incriminating. That one just seems sad. And like, something that happens. 
Yeah, but there's definitely an implication that, like, there are other things that could have happened. Like, I bet if we remember, like, remember breakup or remember murder or remember, like, it will tell us other things, right? Whoa. Oh, Jesus. All right, remember murder. The one thing you didn't want to remember. A bloody smile drawn across the aisle, knock deep for teeth, punch them all out. A red, red smile, brighter than any lipstick. But wait, she speaks. No, she does not. The smile drips, runs into the carpet, and blushes into a crimson flower. Purple bruises. Colorful scene, don't you think? Of course, it's all in the past now, and they said you were over it. A bright red smile opens and devours you whole. Everything goes black. Jesus. All right. Um. What if we just leave? Yeah, give it a shot. You turn the trolley around and head to the checkout. You unload onto the conveyor, and a cheerful young girl in a plain uniform flips everything through her scanner. A friendly young man packs everything into bags, and you wheel them to your car. You unload into your boot and drive home. The roads are quiet. Hey, this guy's British. <laughs> okay. Um... Hmm. Um. Did we try laughing? Uh, no, we didn't. Glance at the penne. The Naki has triggered a memory of a holiday. You remember the pasta museum. Hundreds of different shapes, swirls, bows, shells, loops, and strings. All different, subtly different. And at the middle of it all, Claire? Claire? Hell, it's only pasta. You grab a bag of penne and push the trolley. It's slickly gripping the floor. And wheel on to the next aisle. Uh, huh. Mind like a goldfish. What did you just ask? Uh, did we try laughing? You allow yourself a laugh. Memories of holiday float up and tickle your cheek. The two guitars singing in a pigeon English by your table as you finish it off your Naki. Claire thought they were quite good, but for you they were too close to embarrassing. And the bric-a-brac sellers with their lighters, naked statues, you push the nipple to light up. And brass coliseums. Not like in the films, really, but then real romance often isn't, right? I mean, there was the evening when you ate on the street where they filmed the Dolce Vita. You spent the meal being distracted by a beggar who was doing a mime swim across the pavement. Real romance makes you laugh. Oh, that's a hell of a last line. I It's really interesting how these are all uh, written, and like this goes back to what we were talking about, about branching narratives earlier. The general memories of Rome and of all... The, the general memories of Rome all seem to kind of accommodate whatever it was that happened to Claire, which, like, I, I get the sense that there are probably a few different... Like, did we murder her, or did she get murdered, or did she have an accident, or did she just dump us? Like... Yeah, like, absolutely. I, th I think... I think this does a really good job of taking this this kind of, like, idea of here are, here are four players because you have you have the who you are you have the woman you have claire and then you have just like the fact that you're in an aisle sort of as its own like player mm -hmm. and then um okay what can we do with these four things or like maybe rome is a player and, yeah. Okay, it's Rome. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna try and Roman holiday it, and yeah, Vespa's Vespa's mildly terrifying. Mm hmm. We'll never forget jumping off the back of a Vespa 
as the person who is writing it for the first time was not thinking about it and ended up on an, uh, one of those on ramps onto I ten being like, nope, 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 nope. Oh no. <laughs> Which was definitely, definitely an experience and uh, has been a big part of why I never bought a Vespa. Um, all right. Well, if we, if we laugh. Um, okay. So we laughed, we cried. We jumped. We danced. We sang. What is the human condition? <laughs> this is getting more philosophical than I anticipated from tonight. <laughs> um, we attack the woman. Did we try attacking the sauces? Maybe we can smash the sauces on the ground. Something inside you stirs. You walk over to the sauces next to the brunette. As you stare at the myriad of jars before you, your eyes slowly unfocus and you lash out. Some of the jars smash as they hit the floor, glassy red wounds. Others roll off down the aisle. The woman is standing, shocked, red sauce slowly dripping down her leg. She turns to look at you, her eyes glassy and white with disbelief. As you slowly back away, you feel a hand grab you. What the fuck's your game, mate? You're taken by two burly store security guards to a little office around the back of the store. A policeman arrives. He calls you by your first name. Then another man arrives. Not a policeman, but he is an official. And he talks with you. He's sorry. They thought that you were cured. But apparently all they did was push everything below the surface. So deep they didn't notice. And they are the experts. They take you home with them. Damn. That's, oh. that's another. Um, okay. Well. Let's hmm. do... Let's try a couple more ideas. Did we try, the, did we try remembering the Pantheon? You remember the Pantheon. It looks so solid. It had stood the test of time. You were sure that nothing could be ephemeral after being near that. It was so beautiful yet strong, timeless. But you were wrong. It was the only thing that was so. Your life, your relationship, Claire, all open to change, decay, and collapse. The image of the Pantheon in your head slowly sinks, failing to support you with its pillars. You move the memory aside, out of direct sight, and continue with the shopping. Yeah, see, so that's, that to me seems to imply a breakup, right? Or mm -hmm. maybe we did murder her, I don't know. But, like, it's the juxtaposition where, like, if you want to decide that... So you remember the Pantheon, and then you remember murder, right? Like, and the remember murder command very strongly implies that we murdered, we murdered Claire. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But I think too, it's like, and I think this is something that that all all good like narrative kinds of games do, is like it is a reflection of what you want to be doing, and it's sort of. I think because this is so small, sort of like changes very rapidly because of what you choose. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's it's a big thing in, like, designing games where, like, how how do you do uh, morality or, or not even morality in the sense of morality, but just some kind of way to measure your um, affect, I guess, is a word for it. Hmm. Where this, this does it because it's one move okay you chose this violent affect you're going to get a violent story where you're you know kind of a horrible person where okay and if you... after you oh 
where where okay you remember the pantheon you know you're thinking about like history and the past and what happens when you overthink the past yeah hmm. i don't know i've broken my pen thankfully none of these will require me to do any mapping <laughs> Yep, that's a very it's a very a uh, contained genre. <laughs> um Can we tell the woman about anything? Yep. Oh. You pro I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a, a old one. Repeat. Yeah. You approach the brunette. She turns hearing you approach and you speak. Excuse me. I just need to tell somebody about something that happened a long time ago. It's just that, well, I thought it was better not to remember, but now I'm not so sure. And I need to tell. She looks embarrassed, puzzled. You continue. There is a holiday to Rome. You know Rome, yeah? And a girl, Claire. You don't know her. And everything, everything went wrong. Not because of what you said, but more the way you said it. The brunette reaches out to you and gives you a hug. You cry a little. When it's over, you thank her. She wishes you luck and you finish your shopping. You seek more help, this time from professionals. With the help and support of unselfish love, you rebuild the shell of your life, which is to say you learn to love again. That's easily the most positive ending i think i don't know i think i think maybe the the uh oh and you guys go on a awesome date at the grocery yeah but the good. awesome date doesn't end with uh self -realiz with self-realization <laughs> yeah um do we have any other thoughts on this uh, I feel like there's a bunch that I'm missing, but um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, I I really think we hit sort of cater on wild things we could try with taking off clothes. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> oof, the insanity peak. 